This video demonstrates Visicon's structural analytic capabilities that allow you to take any Revit, Adapt, ETABS, or IFC model that has structural components modeled in it, quickly calculate tributary areas, and have the program automatically calculate and visualize a load path. The final commercial release will then also include an actual uh, load calculation as well as some uh, basic uh, structural checks that allow a structural engineer to be able to do some quick um, uh, assessments on the configuration of their structure. We'll start our demonstration by opening an existing model. So this is the same model that's covered in some of the other videos. And so what we're going to do in this case is just open up one of the um, components. So if I select a component, so the way the structural analytics work is essentially any of the components that are so for example, I'm selecting that under the analytic um, property section. You see that it says analytic enabled, yes or no. So as long as it's a component is um, tagged to be analytic enabled, it's included in the uh, structural um, and analytic um, parts of the application. So we'll invoke the analytic features by going to the analytic tab. And then we'll just kind of work through from the left uh, to the right. So the first thing Visicon does is it, it takes any physical um, representation that you've imported and breaks it down into our own um, analytic representation. So I'll go ahead and click this first button. And what you're seeing is it's, it's going to essentially split up the project into explicit horizontal and vertical um, elements. What the uh, the background behind that is that you know essentially from a load path or load uh, tracking perspective, what we want to be able to do is just essentially identify and separate out either horizontal or vertical load paths. Okay, now that we've generated our um, analytic mass, let's go ahead and explore the model and see what it's actually done. So first thing we'll observe is that the at the lower part here, the walls have been discretized into individual little panels. And that's something that we developed, um, realizing that you could have a Revit model where a wall is modeled you know, pretty much the entire extent of this basement area. And from a load tracking perspective, we wanted to be able to kind of break it down into more granular uh, components. If I select any of these um, objects, you can see that the program then displays what it has calculated as an analytic mass. So this is one horizontal analytic mass and color codes essentially what is transferring loads in blue f above into it and then in orange below the green indicates a horizontal uh, load transfer. So essentially um, so we can see here the structure is broken down into these various analytic levels. So here you have you know, a complete, it merges the various slabs, and even here, this transfer beam is split into different uh, components. So this is, uh, let's go to the top and see if there's anything of interest here. So we have, again, our analytic mass um, at this level, and then essentially you have um, the rest of the components that make up the uh, top of the structure. So this is looking at the um, analytic model and you can isolate so for example if I look here it's allowing me to display the horizontal upper or lower so that's really what uh, what this refers to the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to calculate our tributaries and now that tributaries are calculated you can come in and for example you'll see each so this column here has a tributary region this is another tributary region, and we can just kind of work our way through the structure. And you can see how the program has split your the model into individual uh, tributaries. And it doesn't matter how, how complex the structure is, Visicon's algorithm is pretty robust and essentially can break down uh, these structures. The next step is to uh, calculate the load path. And in the current alpha release, we have not um, turned on the capabilities for a user to modify the load path. So in this case, we're just going to look at the default load path that the program uh, calculates. You see on the right side, we have 
some functions already in place that essentially explicitly display any transfer paths and allows the user to kind of provide more fine tuning of the uh, load path itself. What we're observing in this mode after we've calculated the load path is the first thing that it does is it displays all of the um, tributary regions where there's a transfer. So if I look from the top down, those that are, let's say this light blue, indicate transfers that don't have any load except for the directly applied load and self-weight coming onto it. So these light green ones are essentially um, are those where there's a transfer. So I can immediately just kind of browse my model. I can see, okay, here at this location, and it's very apparent, there's a clear transfer. If I select this column, I can now highlight the load path. So this is the load path. So I can see that this column is really taking a transfer of load from the left and the right. And I can then trace that load as it comes all the way down into the basement. If I want to see it further down, I go to my visibility, turn off my walls, and I can see exactly how that load gets transferred to my foundation. So there are no other transfers. I can come in and let's turn on the walls again. Well, let's select a couple other locations. So for example, I'll select this column. So if I select this column, you can see how it's transferring and coming into the foundation. And here there are clearly a couple transfers. So this has a a fairly complex load path that is uh, essentially bringing loads into the structure. So what's what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this, and let me go and isolate, is to allow structural engineers, architects, contractors, greater insight into the overall complexity and uh, load transfer of, um, of their structural uh, configuration. So it gives people a better sense of where they need to focus their uh, detailed design attention, and the program will also give them kind of order of magnitude, you know, estimates of what those loads are on the components. So as you're sitting in a in a meeting and you want to do quick, uh, you know, run through different scenarios and configurations, using Visicon you'll be able to very quickly just look at different um, configurations. As we move further to the right, you can then also dis colorize the loads either by the total load or the stress. So here, so essentially this is, and this is just based on self-weight at this point, so it's not uh, fully, um, uh, let's say, you know, functional yet, but this is going to be um, uh, built out for the commercial release. And so if I come in and again, turn off the walls, you can see exactly, gives you a great indication of which columns might be the ones that are heaviest uh, loaded. Again, this based on the initial load path and the um, uh, self-weight calculation. So again, going to the analytic, this is looking at stress or the total load that's on a structure. You can look at any of these, and in the, in the final configuration you see under, under load case, so this is looking at the total load. So any loads that you have imported in your structure, you'll be able to isolate and run some simple structural checks based on individual load cases and or certain combinations that you import from either your eTabs Adapt or Revit models. We'll also do some um, additional structural checks. So essentially it'll um, do a quick uh, column check. Um, I, I realize these um, the labeling here is a little bit um, off, but it'll do, let's just talk about the icons themselves. It'll do a column check, beam check, wall check. It'll identify the longest spans and longest cantilevers in your project, as well as highlight those column slab connections where the program estimates that you'll have the uh, highest likelihood of a punching shear um, issue. So this is a quick summary of how the analytic capabilities work, again, for the purpose of rapid uh, you know, prototyping and assessment of where a particular configuration of a, of a BIM model might have the um, you know, greatest structural um, you know, demands. Let's look at a few other models just to show you the complexity of what you can do. So this is another um, example of model. Again, first thing we, we discussed is I can quickly identify with these green areas where I have transfers. So if I turn around and look here, I can 
I can see that yes, there's actually a transfer beam. Again, I select the um, column and I can isolate the load path and I can see, okay, that's very clear. This column has a transfer beam and essentially is carrying quite a bit of, uh, of load. So I can verify that my structural system is as I expect it to be. Um, again, if I unselect, it highlights all of the areas where I have a transfer and at any point I can come in and just visualize essentially how it's happening. So this is looking at, at uh, this particular model. Again, we can look at some, some other. This one has is more of a steel uh, configuration. Again, I can see where I have my transfer. So for example, I see at this location, this is a transfer. Yes, and it's clear something has to be designed for, for that. And let's look at one last model. So here, again, a situation where we have our various transfers and I can very nicely isolate and visualize my load paths. Again, I can also, I can go from any point at the top. So if I select this panel, isolated, I can see, okay, this is a pretty clear load path down. If I select this one, okay, clearly there's a transfer in the middle and so forth. So let's go ahead and try to do a loading on this one with the stress. And so again, you can see how the structure is um, is being loaded. So that concludes the, the brief discussion and overview of the structural analytic capabilities. Again, it's, it's there to provide structural engineers with a very quick uh, way to be able to assess the, you know, the loads and governing loads and uh, governing uh, structural conditions of their projects. Thank you.